So Adam's in the house. I see you, Adam. We'll get started okay. uh, in two minutes. By the way, for, for people for people that are just logging in, because we had less attendance today, which I expected, because it's the first day we moved the webinar one hour earlier. Uh, I want to remind everybody that's coming in right now. Uh, we we said it plenty of times, you know, during the last month. But I understand that you didn't remember. You know, habit is you know a, yeah. a thing that 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 shows persistence always. That since today we're starting one hour earlier. So um, uh, please try to remember. You you'll see the email is also coming. The email reminder is also coming one hour earlier, of course. Uh, so starting tomorrow, try to remember that we're starting one uh, one hour earlier, and you know we'll be happy to see you there um, again. So have a wonderful interview with uh, Adam. I'm, I'm definitely going to be hearing in. He always uh, has interesting interest, interesting stuff to share. Thank you, and Dave. Thank you, Steve. And, and uh, I'm hoping for the rest of the questions, son... which are a lot, we're going to see them yeah. tomorrow, uh, guys and girls. Um, you know, I, I'm already writing them down, so we're going to go over them tomorrow. Hope your son feels better, Steve, so you feel better. Thank you. All right, buddy. So, Adam, welcome back to FACE, my friend. I'm making you the presenter. Thank you so much for adjusting to our new start times here, Adam. It's waiting to hear you. There you okay, are. Okay. We got me here? Yeah, I got you, Adam. How are you? Good, 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 good. Road? Are you on the road I'm, somewhere? I'm on the road today. Can you see me Where okay? Where are you going? Where are you going, I'm, buddy? I'm back. I mean, I'm in Quebec here at the moment, uh, staying for a month. So just working on the road for a little bit. Okay. Uh, you know, having a having a great yeah. time. Wait, are you uh, are you in, are you pulling an airstream and just driving around Canada or what? <laughs> yeah, well, that's something like that. I've got the family. Right. There we go. Uh, I got the picture should come up here in a second. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, taking a little break with the family. Not really taking a break, but it's just nice, nice to be able to go on the road <laughs> and uh, back things up. And uh, yeah, just actually got here last night, so it's been a little bit of a hectic morning getting things set up. But I uh, got a nice little setup here for the road, so uh, you it's know, it's always nice to change up. Gives you a little, little boost of energy. Yeah, my, yeah, my wife found a great spot here, so All happy right. to. Uh, Happy to be on the road. Trade, trade from a new venue. So I, at first, uh, Adam, I'd like to acknowledge what you said in our last interview. Seasonally, you were looking for yen strength, which meant U.S. dollar, Japanese yen weakness. Kudos right there. And, yeah. uh, and, and you were talking about you just have to stay long the euro, and they're not going to give you a big break tenter, and that's exactly what happened. And here we are now, so great calls. Uh, the first question I have uh, really comes from Blake. Uh, we have BOE Thursday. What do you think Carney's going to do? And cable, can, uh, compared to Euro, has been demonstrating a lot of relative weakness. You know, it's been grinding, really hasn't had the same type of acceleration. So we're interested in Adam Button's view of whether Carney is going to uh, actually make a move and raise rates and uh, if he does what do you think can happen and if he doesn't what do you think is going to happen right if we, if we wind it back up I mean, the, the, the bank of england like a lot of central banks took this hawkish step right and now the market's sort of thinking well they might not do it one thing is that they've added a new member to the mpc um it sounds like he might be a little bit dovish he he warned a lot about breakfast he uh, breakfast he warned a lot about brexit and uh and so that could could swing the votes a little bit back towards Carney. And I think there is this worry about sterling strength at the moment, and they're seeing it happen to other central banks. Um yeah. and they so don't want they, they don't like, want a stronger cable. Well, nobody seems to want it, right? And the yeah. other seasonally, I, I don't know if you want to get into seasonals yet, but yeah. it is the worst month on the calendar for sterling. Um, August I think is 10 of the last 12 August. Sterling's down, an average about one and a half, uh, 1.05 percent. So it's a you know seasonals bow to fundamentals at times, but there is a little bit of a seasonal headwind there for sterling, uh, for whatever reason. That's a good headwind. But I, I think really the BOE does set the tone. And okay, so you know what's the rush to hype? But we see these mixed messages from Cardi again, and again. Again, repeat itself again because it, it was at the Mansion House speech again that he was hawkish, and, and even since then, 
and he's had to reel it back. He's kind of reeled it back himself already. The data has been, um, you know, so, so especially in squishy. Yeah. See. Let's wait okay. and see how the inflation All right. come so out. I mean, it it sounds to me it, it like you don't think. Like yeah, it sounds to me, and I think you, did you say breakfast instead of Brexit? Instead of breakfast, Brexit? Because, you know, maybe you're hungry. I think it's <laughs> it. Anyway. I, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so it seems to me like you think we're basically, you know, he's not going to do anything. Why? 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 Right? It's August. Nobody's doing yeah. anything in August. Uh, you yeah. give it the wait and see kind of month, and you know, but you look at the chart. I mean, it looks pretty good um, in the for the next little bit. So I, I don't. I'm not really eager to bet against it. I think it's one of those trades that. If, he does come up of his or, or neutral, then there's a bit of time to get in and, and let it let it run a little ways. Um, because it's not really a great spot to sell it going into the the uh, announcement unless we'll see what it looks like on Thursday. Yeah, but. the only thing I think about is if a if a instrument can't perform when it has tailwinds, like a weak dollar, what's gonna happen if the dollar catches a bid and I I'm not saying we're there today, but I don't think we're too far away before we're due for some type of decent reaction in the dollar. The cable can't rally in a weak dollar environment. What's it going to do if the Dixie recovers to 95 or 96? Yes. I'm in the same camp. The dollar, uh, wait, wait, there's going to, going to be a bounce, and you would have thought it might have come already, and August doesn't look so great for it either, but maybe in the next six weeks or, or into September, or if there's some risk immersion, you know. Is August kind of a negative month for most instruments? Uh, what instruments are positive during the month of August? Yeah, I mean, a few things come through. It, it is this very neutral month if you look at the dollar, the euro, and the yen. There isn't a lot to pick up on. Um, you know, if you look at the last few years especially, it's a month of high volatility, um, even stretching back 10 years. Uh, you know, if you remember back a couple years ago, there were China worries, and then last year yes. there was a bit of a spike as well, um, and that may skew it a little bit. But you know, intuitively, August is the non-volatility month, right? Because it's vacation month. But that it doesn't really bear out. And, and I guess you have that thinner market, so the volatility, whenever it hits, is a little bit more aggressive. And certainly, the market is set up for some volatility. You know, we saw a little bit last week, and the trade has continued to be to fade volatility. But you can get a pretty hard squeeze when everyone's trying to buy the dip, and especially uh, when things are thin like this in August. Exactly. So there, there is that there, and I think you'll see it in the bond market first, uh, but or it could be in China first again. Uh, you know, the volatility can come from anywhere. Politics, right? Uh, yes. So we'll we'll see. Well, speaking about volatility, the Middle East. Do you have any feelings firmed up about what you see happening there, geo wise? Because I want to talk about the oil. Yeah, we touched on Qatar last time, and uh, I mean, oil has been a good trade. That I'm yeah. not sure that's the impetus behind it. Venezuela, it turns out. I mean, that's the thing about yeah. oil and and politics is it's uh, you know oil. Poor people. If if you're looking for oil, the best place to look is where there's political instability. <laughs> Right. Because it always seems to be oil where there's political instability. I think, well, maybe it's more the oil that brings that. But, but uh, easily because the there, there are some noises, happen. there are some noises that I'm hearing on the news about that we, uh, the current administration, really wants to is already accusing Iran of uh, non-compliance. Okay, and the Europeans believe they are complying. It's almost like you know trying to pick a fight. There's been some uh, naval action, you know, where they're shooting at each other, warning shots, et cetera. So I was wondering if you still thought that that could be a flashpoint. And, and that, that's the key. I'd be interested in what you see in oil. Uh, Nick, Nick was pretty uh, good with calling the low there, and she was looking for 50, so we're at her targets. Uh, I was wondering what you thought. Uh, is this a, another bear market rally in, in crude oil, Adam? Or, is, uh, or has it changed? 
Yeah, seasonally, it, it is a weak time of year. Inventories are going to begin to reverse, but you have this Venezuela tail, tailwind. When you talk about Iran, Saudi Arabia, I mean, America has chosen its side in that in that battle, and Saudi Arabia may press its position with the new crown prince there. So right. the risks geopolitically are always high, though, and are they especially high at the moment in the Middle East? Uh, yeah, you could argue there. there's that new uncertainty with the new president and, and what they might do. Uh, but that's, again, I think that's a headline trade. But technically, it looks pretty good, too. Oil has, has made a nice little run. I mean, we have the sterling chart up there. I'm not sure you can see my chart, but I'll... Uh, we got him. Yeah, let's pop in. I mean, there's not a lot drawn on it, uh, but uh, just, a, just a quick look while we're talking about oil. I mean, that's a, that's a nice run. I mean, if you, you run and you take that trend line, and I think it was the 100-day moving average, or it cuts right through there. We busted above that on, on Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not a lot to dislike in the chart. Maybe it's a little bit too much momentum. Um, yeah, but it's you like know, a, a huge going range. It's a, you know, if you're a range trader, oil's been great, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. all you have to do is wait for, you know, top of the range bottom of the range. Uh, any views on what's happening in commodity currencies? You know, the loony has been so strong and, you know, we're uh, trading this 125 level. You know, I know some technicians eventually are looking for maybe 116 before it, you know, this bear phase is over, but doesn't it look overdone to you that we could get some type of uh, reaction, like it, when the dollar turns and Canada gets popped too? And maybe crude yeah. comes down to support that idea from fish. I mean, it's, it's, you don't catch a falling knife, and, and that has been a, a tough one in Dollar Cat. Every time it looks like it might, it might look like it might turn on Thursday, and then GDP yeah. comes out right. and it's super strong again. Uh, yeah. But the Bank of Canada isn't going to like this 10 cent one way move. And uh, in terms of 116, I mean, that's a 20 cent one way move. I mean, that's. Right. Yeah. Really Unless you're, you know, to me, you know, you don't get that kind of move on a couple central bank hikes. So, you know, I'm not sure on the timing. Maybe it flattens out a little bit and bounces. Um, it's the specs have got a little long, and the, the CFTC numbers on Friday were now at a net, I think, about 25K long after being net short almost 100K, you know, a month, a month yeah, and a half. Boy. That's what uh, really helped set up the decline was the wrong footedness in uh, the market and the positioning, don't you think? Yeah. The, you know, the what the one fifty bulls got punched. Oh, it was any but kind of broke up broke out technically above that one thirty five, one thirty six yeah. range. And the euro was a little bit uh, along the same kind of trade where it looked like it was breaking down below the range. And you get the biggest moves sometimes that you get that false breakout and, and yeah. it runs in the other direction. And of course all the data is lined up as well. But, you know, Canadian dollar, I don't think you can buy it at these levels. I mean, that seems crazy not to wait till at least 127. And I'd be interested to see, right. okay. um, you know, that's a big week of news. I mean, America just needs one little data point to show a good uptick in inflation and the dollar could bounce. You know, the dollar well, rolls are we'll have to wait for the NFP? What, what, uh, what? What fundamental reports do you think could set up a catalyst for a dollar recovery here? And well, the wage growth on Friday and, and on farm payrolls okay. is the big one. Uh, that's the biggest number in markets is that uh, that hourly wage growth in, in on farm payrolls. Um, and, and also, you know, you talk to people, the dollar bulls are always there. You talk to CAD, you know, real money traders. The, the buyers just, they're happy to stay in dollars. And there's always this, impetus to load up in dollars and uh, us dollars and ride out you know commodity currency weakness that just that that stability there especially here 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 in canada so i don't think there's that much left in it for now and and you know, you're going you're getting at long-term dollar buyers even at 125 are, are happy to take it in terms of the bigger picture on commodity currencies it's seasonally for canadian dollar not much happening this month but for the australian dollar it's the weakest or second weakest month on the calendar over 10 or 20 year periods. Uh, and that sets up the RBA meeting is tomorrow. And I think uh, there is this feeling out there that the commodity currency central banks will move together. The RBA will be a little bit more hawkish. Uh, but if you go back a couple months ago, I mean, they came out of a very yeah. weak first quarter. 
Um, you know, the, the numbers haven't been so super strong up until now, and they hate a strong currency. I mean, they're played out on the job owning. They've talked way too much, and that won't help, but they can certainly stay dovish and, and, and put a little bit of a, a route on the Australian dollar for a few days. Again, is I think it's Kiwi, where you can wait for the headline. Yeah, is the Kiwi in the same type of position exactly. seasonally? Okay. Exactly. Because if you look at it, we're at such major, major resistance here in the Kiwi. We were talking about it earlier in the room, like, you know, a weekly chart or, right. or a daily. Yeah, see how we're, you know, right there, it's kind of an ascending triangle. Looks like maybe it could pull back one more time, but we start getting back over 74 and closing above it. It measures way up there. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's all these currencies, right? I mean, you, yeah. look, you look out and you think, boy, the U.S. dollar is in real trouble. I mean, uh, also the, yeah. the euro up above up yeah. above 117, it, it's pretty daunting when you stand back and you look, wow, 140. Um, and it was that it just because. And is 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 it just because um, the market might think that we're the Fed is almost done? I mean, I've heard people say, yeah, maybe one more rate hike this year, and and that the other uh, central banks are beginning to taper. So they're now we're nearing the end of a interest rate hike cycle, and they're just beginning. Mm -hmm. Or is it could it possibly be about confidence in uh, the U.S. economy, or just there are other areas like Europe that just show better signs of growth than the U.S. What's behind yeah. the dollar? I mean, we we went from a pretty, you know, bullish environment in the dollar to the dollar, like you said, and we're talking weak against everything. Right. What do you it's think? That, I think it's it? that a lot of that speculative trade getting booted out. I mean, it looked so good at the start of the year. You had this new administration that was going to pass health care reform, tax reform, infrastructure. I mean, we've beaten this theme to death, um, and that isn't really happening. Growth at the same time, you had these great confidence numbers. I mean, they were out of yeah. sight despite the spike of confidence. Well, then it, it's got to be. Uh, it just it's got to be the, Then it's probably people betting against this administration getting anything done and when people say you know the u.s is leaving a vacuum i think i just lost adam at least your picture can i hear you oh that's too bad we'll see if he comes back. wait i was still here oh okay you're here okay you're I here drop the webcam there all right okay so uh then basically it's a market betting against the dollar because what's happening here domestically, possibly not getting the agenda done, healthcare failing, will it interest, all the things they hoped for are just being pulled out from under them. And you know, the US pulls back, like we say we're not gonna import Venezuelan oil. Who's down there to say they'll buy it? Putin. Right. Okay, you know, we pull out of uh, uh I, I hear you. Huh? You get it. I think what's happening is you can just keep kicking the can down the road, though, on this tax reform story, right? Okay, so it didn't happen this year. Well, it's still going to happen next year. And I, I think that's why you can't get a big bet against the dollar. That's why you can't get up to these levels. On the other hand, look at the chart. I mean, the, you don't want to be the guy that sits and says, I don't want to be the guy that sits and says, you know, yeah, you buy the dollar because they're going to figure it out in Congress. You know, the U.S. is probably more of a two and a half, three percent economy than a one and a half percent economy. But I mean, the chart is just saying, be careful with the dollar. Um, so, you know, I, I think I, I'm willing to stay along the dollar or to cautiously buy the dollar in the hopes that if we get two or three or four good data points, the dollar will rally, you know, three, four hundred pips um, pretty easily, and even if it's just a retracement. Um, right. And I think there's just better odds okay. that you get a string of good data because that's all the Fed wants to see. If you look at the bias at the Fed, there are at least 10 people on the Fed that will see three or four good data points and say, okay, now it's coming. Now the, you know, the gains are coming. Let's talk about hiking again. 
And the market can't fight that. The market will pile into U.S. dollar longs on that sort of thing. So, okay. uh, again, so, uh, I, I, just the conviction level, it's hard to have it right now. Cause you, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's like everything's a, everything's a trade now. Not everything's a big position. Everything's a trade, which is usually the way it is anyway. So uh, I'm looking for another new high in Euro. Do you have any levels? Oh, yeah. you I can't. Like that is a big trade. The euro is so good. I mean, they uh, they yeah. figured it out. I think politically there for a little bit. I mean, yeah. Merkel is going to win. A lot of those risks are are behind the market now. Uh, technically, it's magnificent. Um, yeah. You know, they're shallow dips. I think it, it for a long time, especially around 110, 112, everyone was looking back for that pullback to 108, and now they're chasing. And they'll continue to chase because the pullbacks are 200 pips. And um, I think it's, that's the trade. Just buy any kind of 200 pip or so dip and ride it at least up to 125. And we'll see how the numbers develop. I mean, Nowotny last week, right before Yellen came out for the FOMC or the, or the FOMC statement, was saying some pretty hawkish things. Nowotny is an ECB uh, governing council member. And it, right. it came at an odd time, and uh, the euro reacted a little bit. But if Draghi starts to say those same sort of things, and he was sort of like, you know what, we was, of course we're talking about hiking rates, of course we're talking about exiting QE, and everyone knows they are. And just Draghi's just trying to hold this ball like a beach ball underwater yeah. for right. a few more months, keep the euro down, but he's inevitably losing his grip because it's inflating. And, and then now there are these other central bankers that want to let it pop. And, you know, I don't think you can fight the euro, at least until you get him saying that, because then you have maybe like the sell the fact trade, because the market is just saying, Draghi, you're going to get more hawkish either this month, next month or whenever. And I can I can wait until it happens. So, you know, the, nice. you know, the, you know it's like the, the hangman's news is coming. So the euro is. It's just beautiful, I think. So if you think that we're getting close to a dollar buy, even though you're still, you know, pretty, you, you can't short the euro, where's your head at on the uh, US dollar yen, which you were very accurate with last, you know, you could have yeah. sold every rally last month. Should yeah. we be getting close to some type of buy point in your work in US dollar yen? Yeah, let me call it up here while we, while we talk about it. I, I like it, I think the thing about you, you know, you have you might get this risk aversion trade, which is the risk, but you know, it's just yeah. simple. All these 108, 109, 110 levels, they look pretty good in dollar yen. Um, it, the bond market has been a little stronger than, uh, sorry, yields have been a little higher than yeah. than you might have thought, given some of the the flows in the background. It's more of a Fed trade, and I don't think the Bank of Japan is even considering uh, getting getting more hawkish. And it's the same story in the Swiss franc, which kind of felt like everybody missed that trade, me included, and it just popped uh, because their they were thinking is they're stuck to the floor, and you, you just buy it against the basket. So I think you know selling selling the yen or buying yen crosses uh, to make it a little easier to understand buying Swiss franc crosses. It's uh, that those are sort of long term trades that you just buy it and and get out of the way if there's some real risk aversion. But uh, it, they look good now. You know, you've had that pullback that you would have wanted um, a month ago because I don't, think, I don't see a big reason for it to continue. Um, but that, that was really something in, in the Swiss franc, and I think it's just a matter of time until it happens in the end along the same lines. Interesting. Okay, so uh, Swiss leading the, uh, the way of what the yen could do. You know, actually, our own Steve Volge saw that. He was telling people, don't try and top pick the uh, euro, buy U.S. dollar Swiss. And, uh, yeah, the, and the euro Swiss had a breakout too, Adam. So, yeah, yeah euro Swiss, okay. there it is. Yeah. That, I mean, that was just that was so nice, right? You know, technical yeah. trader, you see that. I mean, you fall in love with tax all over again. It just very simply yeah. broke out of the range and tacked on another, whatever, two, 300 pips. In a really one-way move. I mean, how big were the pullbacks in that? Like 25 pips at most. Um, and uh, you know, it's slowing down a little bit today, but we're at month end, new month tomorrow, right. and and uh, there'll be a little bit of a shakedown there, and then maybe even until after non-farm payrolls on Friday. But 
you know, it, it, I again we'll watch for that volatility in, in August. Uh, you know, you never know where it comes from, though. There's certainly a few candidates, and uh, uh, are equities one of the candidates? Of course, but I think you. I mean, it's crazy. I, I just so. watched Twitter, and have, like, how many people on Thursday called the talk? Like Amazon, you always find a reason. Oh, Jeff Bezos is the world's richest man. Oh, well, that's the top in equities, and <laughs> sell the Nasdaq. You know, by the end of the day, it was back to flat. It gets crazy yeah. as long as you it have these people saying this is the top, like the, the, the chorus of people calling the top on a 15 pip dip, a 15 point dip in the S&P 500 was just insane. And uh, I mean, I was almost mocking it that same day. So well, we're not at new highs yet. We're not at new highs yet. Right. But we right. have retraced 78.6 already. So well, you know, it's tough to be good. bearish, right? Yeah. Well, I saw a three driver last week. You know, I'm a one trick pony. But I'll tell that. you what. You're not. You're a renaissance man, Adam Button. Oh, uh, well, I'm enjoying this August right. away. And I you know I encourage people to if they you know, that's that's Forex, right? You can take it with you. Um yeah. and uh it's a nice way to uh to see the world. Of course you're staring at computer screens in a different location, but it's still it's nice. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you're in a different you know what? It's a great model that you're representing to people because it's so important to recharge yourself in this business or you just, the battery runs dry and you burn out and then you're not making clear headed decisions and you get impulsive and you know, all the bad habits begin to reappear. So uh, glad you're enjoying your life, Adam. And thank you so much for uh, edifying us again today. You know, I look forward to talking to you. Uh, miss you when I go ahead and book my schedule and forget to put you in. But um, oh. really, thank thank you so much for showing up on the road for us. You know, a lot of people on vacation wouldn't do that. So you're really a, a giving spirit. You've always supported me and my efforts, and you help every community I've ever been a part of. Thank you, buddy. Getting and started. enjoy your. Um, I hope we can do it in San Diego. You're still down in San Diego, right? Yeah, I'm in Temecula now. Oh. A little. Little, little inland from the coast now, but uh, uh, yeah. That sounds all right. Yeah. Uh, they've got internet connections there, so. Yeah, wine country. Uh, be, uh, it's, where they, it's where they grow the wine and it's the home of the Bing cherry. So that's its claim to fame. In fact, it was founded in like 1805 and now I know why, because I thought I'd be looking at weather, you know, like the desert and it's not. I mean, I hardly have used my air conditioning here, so. Mm -hmm. Anyway, buddy, enjoy your family, and I hope pips rain down on you on this trip, and let's get back together soon, all right? Okay, Dale, have a great month, everyone else. Uh, yeah, uh, happy to answer. And so you can whatever, follow, but, Adam um, at, yeah. follow Adam at 4X Live at FX underscore button. Uh, him and his partner, Greg Nikolowski, they're, they're, one, they're one of the best teams out there, and you're, as you can tell, Adam knows his stuff. So thanks again, Adam. Thanks again, Faith. Thank you, Steve and Blake and the whole team for adding nine three threes on the service. Nine more pairs for you guys to watch. Click the link and try the trial subscription. And we'll see everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. Remember, most of all, tell people that you care about how you feel. People aren't mind readers, and don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See you one hour earlier now, guys. See you tomorrow. Good hunting.